Hi guys, it's One Love Ted, and I'm going to try to quick get my afternoon story done before the Packer game. I am reading The Postcard War. I think I'm on Chapter 10. Yes, the meeting of Maxie Hammermans, the pushcarts decide to fight. Looking back on the pushcart war, it seems possible that the trucks might have gone on slowly breaking up the pushcarts in what looked like accidents if it had not been for Mac's brutal attack on Morris, the florist. But the day after Mac hit Morris, the pushcart peddlers held a meeting at Maxie Hammerman's shop. It was at this meeting that the peddlers decided to fight back. The meeting had been called to take up a collection to buy Morris the florist a new cart. Peddlers from all over the city were there. Every kind of pushcart business was represented. Hot dogs and sauerkraut, roast chestnuts, old clothes, ice and coal, ice and ice cream sticks, fruit and vegetables, used cartons, shoelaces and combs, pretzels, dancing dolls, and nylon stockings, to mention only a few. Most of the peddlers who became well known to the public during the pushcart war were present at this meeting. Old Anna, apples and pears, was there, and so was Mr. Jerusalem, all kinds of junk, bought and sold. Harry the Hot Dog, Harry's Hots and Homemade Sauerkraut, was there. Carlos, cartons flattened and removed, was there. Eddie Maroney, coal and ice, home delivered, lettered in three different colors. Oh, he was there. Papa Perrette's pretzels for six for a quarter was there. Frank the Flower, of course, was there. He was the first to speak. It was Frank the Flower's idea to take up a collection to buy Morris a new cart. As you can see from the bandage on his head, my friend Morris has had a terrible experience, said Frank the Flower. Worse yet, his cart is ruined! <sighs> It is a fact, said Maxie Hammerman. I could not put that cart together in 100 years. What I wish to point out, said Frank the Flower, is this. Today it is Morris they are putting out of business. Tomorrow it may be one of you or me. I think we, sh we should, every one of us, give 10 cents, maybe 15, so that Morris can buy a new cart. If it happened to us... Morris would do the same. Believe me, I would, said Morris, but I pray it shouldn't happen to anyone else. Mr. Jerusalem, all kinds of junk bought and sold, stood up. The ten cents we will give, he said, or fifteen, no question. What I want to know is why they are breaking us up. All of a sudden, accidents. Accidents, said old Anna. Is it an accident that Morris the Flora... Flores had accidents on purpose. That is what is happening. All right, on purpose, Mr. Jerusalem agreed. But why, he demanded. They are telling everybody we are in the way, said Papa Peretz. Pretzel, six for 25 cents. I hear it on 14th Street. I hear it on 23rd, even on Delancey Street. I hear it everywhere. They are saying that we are in the way. Way, said old Anna, whose way am I in? I am quiet about my business. I don't take up much space. For 45 years, I sell my apples in front of hospitals, museums, and the best downtown offices. My customers ask about my health, my family. It is the first time I hear that I am in the way. Whose way? Maxie Hammerman got up then. I will explain, said Maxie who had been doing some serious thinking since the day he threw his hammer through his own shop window. Conditions are very bad in the streets, Maxie said. People are getting mad at the trucks. They should have gotten mad a long time ago, but everybody was scared. Who wants to argue with a truck? However, there comes a time, Maxie said, people begin to complain and the trucks do not want the blame for tying up the streets. 
So they have to find somebody else to blame. Well, who shall, who shall they blame, Max, he asked. Taxis? No, there are too many taxis. Cars? No, the too many cars. The trucks do not want to fight the cars and the taxis. That would make too many more people mad at them. But push carts, how many are there? There are hundreds of push carts, said Harry the hot dog. Harry's hot dogs and homemade sauerkraut. Five hundred and nine, to be exact, said Maxie Hammerman. More than most people think, because push carts stay in their own neighborhoods. They are not rushing all over the city to make the traffic worse. Stop a man on the street and ask him how many push carts has he seen today. He will tell you three, maybe four. Although there are five hundred and nine carts licensed to do business in this city. However, Maxie added, even 509 is a small number besides taxis and, and cars. I don't understand, said Papa Peretz. They could kill us all and the traffic would still be terrible. So then they will have to find someone else to blame, said Maxie Hammerman. Motorcycles, maybe, or grocery carts, such as the ladies take to the supermarket. Then people will see how silly it is. By then, said old Anna, we will all be dead. That is correct, said Maxie Hammerman. We will all be dead unless Maxie picked up a hammer and held it as if you were about to hit something, a quick, hard blow. Unless what, said Frank the Flower, seizing Maxie's arm, in case he should be about to throw the hammer through the window again. Unless we fight, said Maxie Hammerman, pulling his arm free and whamming the hammer down on the table in front of him, I say the push carts have got to fight. Of course we have got to fight, said old Anna. Fight the trucks, said Papa Peretz. How can the push carts fight the trucks? Maybe you'd rather be dead, said old Anna. Naturally, we wouldn't, said Harry the hot dog, but how can we fight the trucks? Listen to me, Harry, said old Anna. First, you decide to fight. Then you ask me how. All right, said Harry the hot dog. Fight! So now I ask you, how? Yes, General Anna, we are listening, said Eddie Maroney, bowing to old Anna. This is how old Anna came to be known as General Anna. Eddie Maroney called her general at the meeting at Maxie Hammerman's shop, and the name seemed to suit her. When it came to a vote, all the pushcart peddlers were with General Anna. They realized that they had to stick together, and they had to fight. But how? Harry the hot dog asked again. You want me to sell poison hot dogs to all the truck drivers, baby? General Anna shook her head. It's okay to buy me you should poison the truck drivers. Only you might get the poison dogs mixed up with the regular and then you'll be giving the poison to a good customer. We need a secret weapon, said Papa Peretz. Like a big bomb. For carrying around bombs, you'll get arrested, said General Anna. To everyone's surprise, it was Carlos, from cartons flattened and removed, who had the best idea. Carlos had never spoken out in a meeting before. And that is chapter 10. I'll be back tomorrow with chapter 11, The Secret Weapon. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, One Love Ted Koch, K-O-C-H. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow.